Good evening. Confidential documents gained by this program suggest that the Church of England sought to hush up sex abuse perpetrated by a former bishop and it influenced the course of a police investigation. Former Bishop of Lewis, Peter Ball, who was jailed last year for sexually abusing 18 young men, some of them were teenagers. Well, he was investigated in 1993 but escaped with a police caution. The documents we have reveal Peter Ball's defence team sought to do a deal with a detective to avoid the scandal of a trial. Our special correspondent Colin Campbell has our exclusive story. They're documents that show the church knew Bishop Peter Ball was a dangerous sexual offender. Proof his victims say of cover-up at high levels. I think it's shocking. It's really disturbing how it appears senior figures in the establishment have clustered together to shield Bishop Peter. It really does look as if there was a deeply sinister, coordinated but probably in the end rather inept attempt at cover-up. Written by a Sussex priest titled An Investigation, the documents are described as being for the information solely of the Bishop of Chichester, the late Eric Kemp, and the Archbishop of Canterbury, George Carey. Lord Carey told us he has no knowledge of the investigation and knew nothing at all about the author of the report. Written after Peter Ball escaped proper justice for sexual abuse, the documents say Ball had been involved in abusing not only his office, but very many young men, adding he desperately needs help. Admitting to his defence team that he'd committed indecent assault and gross indecency, Ball pleaded for help, saying he'd do anything to save the church a scandal. To avoid a trial, he promised he'd resign his position and immediately leave the country. What I'm really concerned about is... Is there something bigger here, that there's been a conspiracy of silence and cover-up by other people who knew or had an inkling about what was going on but didn't want to rock the boat and take this to the relevant authorities and make sure that justice was done as it took many decades later actually to happen? Ball targeted his victims under the pretense of teaching them how to lead a monastic life. I roll them out of bed at five o'clock in the morning and... They come down to an R in the dark. The abuse taking place in Sussex in the 80s and 90s. Because you've got nice people like Vic and me. You <laughs> he was assisted by Father Vic House, who was jailed last year for child sex abuse. Sussex police say they only became aware of his offending in 2012. But it seems he should have been investigated much earlier. The documents suggest House had been implicated in the investigation into Peter Ball in 1993, but a Gloucestershire detective wanted to forward the information to Sussex CID, but a Sussex priest persuaded him not to, instead assuring the detective that the Bishop of Chichester would deal with it, adding there is no need for Sussex police to be involved. That's appalling. People who are in a position of trust and power should be protecting the vulnerable. This seems to be the opposite of that. Sussex Police says it received no allegations about Vic House between 1993 and 2012, or it seems another Sussex priest who is described in the documents as also being implicated. In the case of Vic House, it means for 22 years he was allowed by the church to continue working here in Sussex, putting an untold number of young people at possible risk. Between 1990 and 1994, he served as chaplain at the prestigious private school Ardingly College. He went on to work at St Bart's Church in Brighton, where it seems he had close, unrestricted contact with children. There were opportunities to have identified him as an abuser and to have dealt with it. And it's not happened. And I feel let down by that. There are also questions for Gloucestershire police. The documents describe Detective Wayne Murdoch as being sympathetic, adding that he confided in Ball's defence team that he'd been educated by a member of clergy who'd attended the Community of the Glorious Ascension, a religious group founded by Peter Ball and his twin brother. It's also claimed the now-retired detective discussed with Ball's representatives the need to prevent a scandal in the press, especially as Peter was a frequent visitor to Sandringham and is friendly with Prince Charles. In a statement, Wayne Murdoch told us his investigation was conducted with the highest standards of integrity, transparency and impartiality. 
He denies any deal was done, stating that the decision as to how the case was disposed of in 1993 was ultimately taken by the Director of Public Prosecutions, adding that any criticisms being levelled by the media or other persons should be properly addressed through the legal channels of the Goddard inquiry into child sex abuse. I believe that God is calling the young again. In a Senior clergy knew Ball was an abuser, yet chose to protect him, apparently putting the reputation of the institution above the needs of victims. Uh, well, Colin joins me in the studio now. Colin, uh, this raises difficult questions for the church, but also for the former Archbishop of, of Canterbury, Lord Carey. Yes, Lord Carey has declined to, to comment uh, on the documents, but we'll answer questions from the Goddard inquiry into child sex abuse and the church's uh, own review into abuse perpetrated by Bishop Peter Ball. Now, we have today discovered who will head that review, a lady called Dame Moira Gibb, a former head of social services in London. Now, with regards to Vic House, the Diocese of Chichester say they have nothing to suggest that the late Bishop Eric Kemp had enough evidence to take any action to end Vic House's ministry in 1993, but these documents, well, they appear to suggest that it was the actions of Sussex clergy in 1993 that stifled any investigation getting started. Now, my anonymous source has today forwarded, sent all of these documents onto the National Child Sex Abuse Inquiry. Okay, Colin, thank you very much.